one of the things that got us most excited about the very idea of doing a futuristic Batman show was the ability to design Gotham like all over again. Gotham City has grown up in steel and glass and in a sense has lost its humanity. In many ways it's more technological, yet it's also more dangerous than the original Gotham City. When trying to develop this Gotham City, we sort of looked at urban trends and what was going on, the fact that uh, cultures were coming together and mashing up, capitalism was becoming international and sort of mega-capitalism and this, this sort of concentration of power among the few. I can't say that we, we looked at future shock books. It wasn't a big study, it was just our, our, our basic feelings. We're just kind of throwing around ideas about, you know, well, what do we want it to look like? We don't want it to look like Flash Gordon, we don't want it to look retro, we don't want it to look like Blade Runner. Inevitably, you still kind of end up with some of those Sid Mead kind of design elements, kind of the sleekness and the, you know, the kind of weird, you know, industrial kind of shapes. But we were also looking at things like, you know, anime. Something along the lines of a Neo-Tokyo. But we didn't want to get it too detailed and overly um, complicated looking. We wanted to create this sort of sense that the city has grown not only in size, but in scope and in a population. There is some Asian or Chinese uh, caricature kanji in the advertising just to show a little bit more of the globalization of Gotham. It seemed that they were more progressive in Asia than we were here at the time, and so they were coming up with all these new gadgets and things. So we naturally kind of pulled that into the, the look of the show. To a great degree, things stayed the same because, you know, as we get into the 21st century, we realize we don't have jetpacks, we don't have flying cars. So we figured, okay, very few people would actually have flying cars in the future. The technology exists, but it's very, very expensive. So probably only the very, very rich would have flying cars. Setting the show 50 years in the future, we knew that realistically that the, the city would probably not change drastically that much. We tried to put the old against the new and then the new rough it up a little bit because it's still Gotham and even if you bring in terrific looking architectural structure, it's still going to rot into, you know, what Gotham is. We definitely wanted it to feel perpetually nighttime. We had done the red skies on the old Batman show. Metropolis had blue skies. So our definition for New Gotham is going to be purple skies. And then daytime had this burnt orange look. So it never was quite fully daytime. And I think it went a long way to help with that sense of helplessness and desolation. So you imagine the future realistically and then just make it dark and uh, crime ridden. And I think that was our vision for New Gotham. The Gotham we wanted to do was, was more elevated. It was still dark. It still was dingy. It wasn't inviting. In the old Batman, it always seemed like Batman was in charge of the city, whereas this Batman was kind of overwhelmed by the city and, uh, and its scale and how impossibly big everything was around it. In building the city up, and these buildings are like city blocks, huge, uh, in order to get up, we need to get a lot of transportation. Lots of people have to be able to get up. The streets wouldn't necessarily just be horizontal, they would be vertical. So this, this gave, you know, Glenn Mirakami, my, uh, my art director on the show, he came up with this really weird idea of like these vertical subways. You know, the city is so tall that you actually have to take a subway car to get to the top. Buildings not only are vertical, but they're slanted. When you're panning across it, it gives more motion and more movement. We just wanted a scale, lots and lots of scale, so that everyone felt like they were tiny compared to the landscape they were against. One of the things that I found very interesting about this new Gotham City was the fact that the society within it was so stratified. Gotham is more of a melting pot except in that one area of the rich and poor where, where there are a whole bunch of poor people and a lot of really, really wealthy people right at the top. We try to create that dichotomy that the rich live kind of in the towers, that they've gone up towards the sky and then on the street level is really kind of the lower depths. That's where everybody else kind of struggles and lives and works. We see that concentration of capitalism and the sort of destructive effects it has on society today and we were sort of projecting into that criminals, you know, migrate north as well, but, you know, you've got the tops, and you've got the bottom, and then you've got Batman who tries to keep peace everywhere. Overall, it's a futuristic environment with larger empty spaces and a multi-tiered city. That was fun to play in. This new Gotham gave us a sense of height and scale where Batman was never truly on the ground. He was always in the air. He was always hovering over things. This Batman 
got to go around in a city that was designed to fly through. The thing that we always try to do in, in all of our shows is we always say, okay, we don't necessarily have to be realistic, we just have to be convincing. You always had to find that line between not too futuristic, you want to keep it believable, but still fun.